Take your dealership to the next level with over 6,800 on-air interviews with dealer and industry leaders. CBT News, dealer's most trusted source for news, content, and analysis. Welcome to CBT News with Cheyenne Malone. Hey there, hope your Thursday is going quite fine so far. I'm Cheyenne Malone. Welcome back to CBT News. Let's get started. Bank of America's top automotive analyst, John Murphy, has advised Detroit automakers, General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis to exit the Chinese market, quote, as soon as they possibly can due to unprecedented competition and increased local vehicle production. Speaking at an Automotive Press Association event, Murphy emphasized that China is no longer central to the, quote, D3 automakers, who should instead concentrate on more profitable regions. GM, in particular, has seen its market share in China drop from 15% in 2015 to 8.6% last year, alongside a significant earnings decline. Despite GM's plan to regain market share with new electric vehicles, geopolitical risk, and heightened tariffs on China-made EVs further complicate operations. Unlike its Detroit counterparts, Tesla has a cost advantage in EV components, allowing it more flexibility in the Chinese market. CDK Global, a key software provider for auto dealerships in the U.S., experienced a cyber attack that led to the shutdown of most of its systems, affecting around 15,000 dealerships, including those of General Motors, Group One Automotive, and Holman. The breach, which began Tuesday evening, halted sales and operations at these dealerships, forcing staff to resort to manual methods like spreadsheets and sticky notes for small transactions and repairs. CDK has since restored its core dealer management systems and digital retailing solutions after conducting tests and consulting with third-party experts. But the full extent of the attack and the perpetrators remain unknown. Ford is updating its dealership floor plan assistance program starting July 1, shifting from a reimbursement model to an upfront credit system. Under the new rules, dealers will receive a 1% credit of the sticker price on most retail vehicles, regardless of how quickly they sell, which aims to financially benefit retailers and encourage faster inventory turnover. This change addresses a key request from dealers and responds to the industry's rising inventory levels and higher interest rates. Ford's CFO, John Lawyer, expressed concerns about increasing inventories and emphasized the need for careful production planning. The update follows feedback from dealer meetings where Ford also committed to dissolving its EV certification program and enhancing technical support and training. Stellantis has recalled over 1 million U.S. vehicles due to rear view camera issues that could heighten crash risk. The recall affects various 2021 to 2023 models, including Chrysler Pacificas, Jeep Grand Cherokees, Dodge Durangos, Ram Promasters, Jeep Compasses, Wagoneers, and Ram 1500s, 2500s, and 3500s. Stellantis has already provided over-the-air software updates to more than 735,000 affected vehicles and will offer free updates for the remaining ones. The recall was initiated after customer feedback revealed the issue and no related injuries or accidents have been reported. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back with Tim Jackson, the former president and CEO of the Colorado Automobile Dealers Association, to share his unique perspective on the automotive industry's progress and future. Take your dealership to the next level with over 6,800 on-air interviews with dealer and industry leaders. CBT News, dealer's most trusted source for news, content, and analysis. So um, the book is out now. Um, what, what do you want the biggest takeaway to be from the book? What are, what are you trying to do with the book? Is to educate the, the public the, uh, that flying cars are a real thing. They're here. They're going to be part of our future. And, and here's what you need to know about them. Yeah, there's a lot packed into this book. And I've had people say I tried to pack too much into it. There is that history yeah. of how uh, bicycles uh, technology became cars and motorcycles and planes and the interaction between them. Like yeah. Orville Wright sold a plane to Henry Ford, who knew, and uh, delivered it to him in Dearborn, Michigan. Did not know and, that. Uh, Henry, Henry Ford said, well, I want the plane, but I don't want to fly it. I'll hire pilots because I want to, I want to have a professional pilot flying me. Yeah. But today, the, the main airport in Dearborn, Michigan is still the Henry Ford Airport. So <laughs> uh, to have some of that 
there's a lot of interactive history that even a lot of us in the auto industry, yeah. things that I didn't know. Here, here's one for you. You probably know, and I did know too, that Orville and Wilbur Wright in, in um, Dayton, Ohio, had a bicycle shop before they, yep. they built a plane that they flew at Kitty Hawk. Yep. But did you know they also had a car dealership? I so did they not were know car that. dealers. And bike, and they had a bike shop, and they were building cars. I mean, building uh, planes. Wow, I so, did not um, know that. Those, yeah, those are things that are in the book. Huh. And this Joby that I mentioned a minute ago, that's invested in by Boeing, uh, Delta Airlines, and Toyota. They've decided where they're going to build the Jobies, and as a nod to Orville and Wilbur Wright, they are building their facility in Dayton, Ohio. Wow. That's pretty cool. Well, that does it for us for today. But remember, it is easy to stay up to date with the most recent news and trends influencing the retail automotive industry. All you have to do is follow us. We are on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm Cheyenne Malone. You have a good one. CBT News, your number one resource for auto industry news and content.